everybody. It's Terry and DeRay. We're on a road trip. Say hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. <laughs> okay, this is an uh, infomercial. You haven't seen me in quite a while. I usually get up and make announcements about Center of Hope. Well, Center of Hope has started to gather uh, food products to put together their Christmas baskets, and they've asked us to collect stuffing mixes and canned chicken broth. So we're going to have boxes available at the outdoor worship service. Also there's a box in the lobby for drop-off. If you could please purchase as many stuffing mixes and cans of broth as possible. We promise to try to get 200 of each. Thank you. There is the only blue, a God concealed from human sight. He did his with heavenly hue, and framed the worlds with his great might. There is a God.
praises to your name. was thinking back to a few weeks ago um and someone was talking about i can't remember who it was oops but someone was talking about basically the unity of of communion and how it you know basically connects every almost every christian um we, you know we all do kind of the same tradition that we've done for thousands of years on you know the same day you know almost the same time around the same time so and i just I was thinking about that and I was like, that's really cool. Like, that's, and unity, especially now, is just one of the biggest things that um, Christianity um, is and needs to be, at least. So, um, I thought that right now would be a good time to maybe pull your phone and text someone or call someone. Um, maybe you haven't talked to them in a while. And you just want to, you know, maybe remind them why you're thankful for them. Or, um, you know, maybe even just say a quick little prayer for them in your head. Um, any, anything that you can do to just, but just keep in mind that um, this communion is, um, you know, it's really about um, unity. And that's what Christianity is about too, so. Yeah, communion time.
Welcome to our family prayer time. You know, since we've been making these online worship videos, we've been encouraging you to take time out to text or call or write someone out of prayer. Let someone know you're praying for them. And of course, we want you to do that if, if you uh, feel led to do that. But what I want to encourage you for today is to take time for some alone time of prayer with God. I want to encourage you to Maybe use family prayer time as an opportunity to say to God, please give me some time back today that I can spend alone with you. And then commit yourself to actually spending some time alone in prayer where you seek God's heart for the world and for the people around you, but also God's heart for you. What is it he desires for you? Go ahead and pause the video now and say a prayer. Come back and I'll close out our family prayer time. Okay, let's pray. Holy Father in heaven, we lift up to you all those we are concerned about. We're especially concerned with healing for several of our members who have had surgeries or are faced illness. We ask you, Father, to give them strength and full recovery. We pray, Father, that you'd be with us as we walk through this day. And Father, I especially ask that you would grant your people an opportunity to spend time alone with you today. We ask it all in the name of the one who came and walked and lived among us, the one who loves us, Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our friend. Amen. Proverbs eighteen twenty four from the New Living Translation. There are friends who destroy each other, but real friends stick closer than a brother. Hello everybody, um, it's good to be with you. My name is Nathan Hull, um, and what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to talk about Mary, Martha, and Lazarus following Jesus, and how that might look a little bit different than the other people we've talked about so far. <clears throat> and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paraphrase slash read through the story and then at the end, I just want to talk about a couple of things that I feel we can pull from this to um, enhance our, our relationship with Christ and to be more like Jesus and more like Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Um, so let's dive right in. If you have your Bibles, we're going to go to John chapter 11 and start there. So coming into John chapter 11, Jesus is just... Um, escaped from the, the Pharisees when they tried to stone him. Um, <clears throat> he was in Judea, and he, he left. He and his disciples left. And he's... Um, so there, there he's preaching the other towns around there. And he gets word. It says, um, A man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister, Mary and her sister Martha. Um... The sister sent word to Jesus and said, Lord, the one you love is sick. So right there, that's going to tell us that this Lazarus character is um, special to Jesus. Uh, it's not the first time they've met. It's not just a random person. It's someone that Jesus loves. Someone that Jesus has relationship with outside of healing and preaching. It's a personal, close relationship. Um so then, uh, when Jesus heard this, he said, The sickness will not end in death. No, it's for God's glory. And so that God's Son may be glorified through it. And then after that, it says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Um, John just threw that in there. Let us know again, like, like I said, these people that Jesus is talking to and getting these messages from, they're not, they're not just random people. They're um, friends of Jesus. They are people that he loves deeply. Um, great friendships. Um, and it always seems like that is where he goes when he needs like a recharge almost. Um, but he'll go to pray, but then also he'll go to Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Um, and he'll have dinner with them. Um, and like in the next chapter, he goes and he has dinner. And Mary anoints him with oil. Um, and... Uh, it said that Martha and Lazarus were there as well. Um, so it's, it's 
these these are people that he loves, and these people he cares for, and that he has a relationship with. <clears throat> so then uh, Jesus waits a couple of days to go. Um, when he gets word that Lazarus is sick, um, and then he tells his disciples, "Lazarus is dead. Let's go. Uh, it's time to go. We got to go over there because Lazarus is dead." Um, so he gets to so he gets to Mary and Martha's, and he finds that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days, um, and that seems a little random, uh, but just a little tidbit. Uh, when they talk about, when they say, there's a reason they say four days, because um, in that day it was thought that the soul hung around the body for about three days, and after three days the soul left. So uh, at four days he was dead, um, and that, that's going to be important, as you, as you may know, to how the story ends. Uh, Lazarus was dead. Um, continuing on um, in verse 18. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and so many Jews came to Mary and Martha to comfort them for the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed home. Martha said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. In these next few verses, um, it's it's really cool to see because I feel like a lot of us know Martha as the from the story where she's where she's fixing the house for Jesus and she's making she's preparing a, a meal for him and and she's all busy and Mary's in in there listening to Jesus talk and talking to Jesus um, and then we, we we know Martha comes in and says Jesus we tell her to come help me and Jesus says no this is what she's chosen right and it won't be taken from her. Uh, so, so she gets kind of a bad rap, I feel. Uh, but here in these in these next few verses, she's going to display um, a faith in Jesus that I would argue is one of the strongest that we see. Um, she she displays this faith and love for Jesus that only I feel like a true friend might have. So she says. But I know, even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Um, and Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said, I know, in the resurrection he'll rise again. And then Jesus says, Martha, listen, I'm the resurrection. Um, and he's, he's assuring her that things are going to be okay. Um, she, he says, do you believe this? And she says, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come to this world. Um, and as we know from Jesus, he wasn't he wasn't big about telling people that. He wasn't big about proclaiming that to people. Uh, so this is something I feel that Martha came to herself. She was um, very had a deep faith in Jesus um, and was a very close friend of Jesus. Um, continuing on, um, after this, she went back and went. To to Mary, talk to Mary. Um, and I'm sorry, I lost my place. And Mary, when she she said, "The teacher's here, and he's asking for you." Um, and I always I I love this part of it because when Mary heard that Jesus was there, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus um, had not. He had entered the village, but still at the place where Martha met him. And so Mary, when she hears that Jesus is here, she gets up and almost, from the way it reads, she runs. She's running. Running to Jesus. Which is just a beautiful scene anyways. But she runs to Jesus and falls at his feet. And she says, Lord, she repeats what Martha said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And she's weeping right at Jesus' feet. Um, it's a, it's a beautiful, heart-wrenching moment, um, in this story. She's crying right there for Jesus. Um, and it says, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. 
Um, one version says he was, his gut was wrenching. Um, Jesus did not, this was not a good thing. He did not like this. Um, and he says, where have you laid him? And he said, come and, come and see, Lord. And then the very famous verse, John eleven thirty five, 35, Jesus wept. Um, what I want to, I want to take just a moment here. And I want to talk about this verse and just what I think it means. It, it, um, it, this is kind of off topic of what we're talking about, but I think it's a good moment just to, to pause and talk. Jesus weeping. In my belief, that had <clears throat> nothing to do with the fact that Lazarus was dead. It didn't have anything to do that he was physically dead. Um, Jesus weeping was out of pure concern and hurt and empathy for Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, what he went through. He saw the hurt in Mary and Martha. He saw in, in, in the Jews that were with him. He saw the hurt and he saw the, the pain and the despair. And that hurt, that hurts him. That hurt Jesus. And he, and he, and he knew probably what Lazarus went through in that death. It probably wasn't just a, <clears throat> oh, he fell asleep and now he's dead. It was probably a painful death. He probably had a painful death and that probably hurt Jesus. And so he wept. And the point that I just want to make really quick and we'll jump right back into the text. Wherever you are in your life, wherever you find yourself right now watching this, um, in the in the high places, Jesus is with you, but in the low places, in the weeping and in the hurting, Jesus hurts with you. Jesus weeps with you. Um, and I just, I just want to extend that to you and tell you that you're not alone. And he's there with you. I think it's a beautiful sentiment. We'll come back to it a little bit later to talk about some stuff. But So he wept. <clears throat> and the Jews said, see how he loved him. See how much he loved Lazarus. <clears throat> so then the story finishes out. Jesus heals Lazarus. He brings him back to life. Um, and he said, it's all for the glory of God. Um, and so and Lazarus comes out and everyone's all happy. But then some Jews go and they talk to the Pharisees and the Pharisees decide that it's better for Jesus to die than it is for the whole nation to be struck down by Rome. Um, that's basically the gist of the rest of the chapter. <clears throat> but what I want to look at really just for a few minutes, um, is I want to examine two, two things. The first being Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, they, they were disciples of Jesus, but in a different way. They weren't like the twelve, and they weren't like the other disciples that followed Jesus around the countryside, teaching with him and doing, doing work with him. They weren't there with him all the time. They, their, almost it seemed like their responsibility was to be there when Jesus needed them. And I think that speaks to something that we, we go through a lot, and that, that maybe where there's, and in, in Ecclesiastes it says there's a season for everything, and I think <clears throat> this speaks to that. There, there, there may be a time in your life where, as a follower of Jesus, what you need to do is you need to go, you need to go out, you're teaching the word and you're saving lost souls and you are loving those who are around you and all that stuff and all that, all the, the, the big time stuff we talk about. But sometimes there are times in life when God calls us to sit and wait. And that's not easy sometimes. I can't imagine it was easy for, for Mary, Martha and Lazarus. I mean, they, they're probably like, what's Jesus up to? I mean, it would be so cool to see all these miracles. It would be so cool. But that relationship, that fulfilling relationship that they had with Jesus was something that he didn't get anywhere else. And in that way, they were a tremendous help that, in a way that nobody else was. 
So God called them to stay right where they were and be that home base for Jesus almost. Um, and I think it's a beautiful thing. And sometimes God might call us to stay where we're at and wait on him. Wait to be to, to be that home for somebody. Um, and I think that leads right into our next point. We as Christians, um, I think we, I think this story more than anything calls us to be home for those around us, whether it be other believers and we can be a home and encouragement for them um, when they're struggling with things and when they're hurting, or maybe it's to the non-believers, to the people that don't yet believe in Jesus, and we can be a loving place for them to come and be comfortable and open up to. I think we can follow Mary, Martha, and Lazarus's um, description of their relationship with Jesus and be that, like, while we can't be that to Jesus, we can be that to others. We can spread that outward. Um, and just, I think it's important that we're also a compassionate, compassionate place for those that are hurting. Um, we learn this from Jesus right here. Jesus wept. He was, he wept and he weeps with us and he weeps with those who mourn. Um, I think that's what we're called for. We are called to weep with those who weep. We're called to mourn for, with those who mourn. And we're called to just be that home and rock for those around us. And we can't do that all the time. That's that's not realistic. Um, that's why we have the church. And that's the beautiful thing about the church. So um, I'm going to close this out. And I just want you to think. Just think about how this week can you be a home for somebody? How this week can you be that that break that somebody needs? That breath of fresh air. I'm going to pray and then close it out. Thank you, Lord, for today and all you've done. And Lord, please help us to be the home for others that Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were for Jesus. Please help us to be those friends and those kinds of people. Thank you for all you've done and all you're going to do. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Oak Ridge. We're glad that you were in attendance today with our online services. Our benediction today will come from Romans. Chapter 13, verses 8 and 9 from the New Living Translation. Owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. For the commandments say, you must not commit adultery, you must not murder, you must not steal, you must not covet. These and other such commandments are summed up in this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Thank you for having been with us again. Go and be blessed and be a blessing to your world.